Many Nigerians argue that the government has made more promises than achievement demanding actionable targets. I have international finance and economic analyst Mukhtar Mohammed joining me now for further discussion. Good morning to you, Mukhtar. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Thank you, Justin. What a day to be on your program. Thank you. All right. It's been uh, some four or five days of uh, trying times for the countries, uh, the country's economy, the nation, Nigerians generally, you know, with the hashtag end bad governance and um, hunger protest across um, the federation. First of all, um, Nigerians, uh, you know, came out all in one voice saying that um, they cannot really continue to live, you know, with the turmoil that has affected them. But then let's just look at this economically. Let's analyze what has happened in the past four days. Then we'll talk about the president's um, speech yesterday. First of all, economically, uh, how would you say the protest, um, what toll has it taken on the nation's economy? Uh, Justin, for a country that um, the most vibrant economic sector is the um, informal sector, uh, for the past um, three days, market were completely shut down. So when you look at that figures, um, a daily that we would lost over 900 billion. If you put that up, average like 300 billion every day that comes from the informal sector, that's about 900 billion has gone for that day. Uh, secondly, you must know that 90% um, of Nigerians live by daily income. Oh. And whereby they go out, they do their businesses, and they come by, especially the vibrant sector of the Nigerian economy, the transportation sector um, that moved goods from point A to point B. That sector was totally shut down. And um, also um, the vibrant market women, oh. also markets were shut down. So those are the most vibrant sector, the small businesses. So they were shut down for the, for the past, at least for the first three days. Uh, maybe you say that... Um, 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 the other days we may be losing, but it's not as much as we lost in the past three days when this protest started. So definitely, um, even the government sector, you realize that some government offices also were not open. Um, most of the former private sector, most of them work from home. And it's not the same when you work from home like when you work from the offices. And so when you look at that, you, you just got to agree that about 300 billion was lost daily. And then when you look at them um, gradually coming to activities, uh, you will be saying that not every sector of the Nigerian economy are ready to go out. Um, people are being cautious. Um, you can look at the roads today, especially in Lagos. I went out to look at it before this interview. You see pocket of movement, but you realize that they are being very, very cautious because, uh, uh, like you said, maybe a lot of people are not happy with the speech. They don't think the speech have addressed the grievances of the pro protesters, and they feel that protests will start any moment from now. And um, reporting now, we got the report that in Ojota, the protesters have started gathering. So in Abuja, also they are gathering, and so it shows that um, the, 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 there's no end to the protest yet. Hmm. All right, uh, you know, from popular, um, you know, reactions now, a lot of people are saying that the president did not actually uh, address some of the issues um, raised by the protesters, specifically their economic um, demands and all that. But then uh, reports on making the round uh, say the president actually listed more of his um, policy achievements rather than uh, tackling the issues head on. But let's just see if we can talk about some of the things that the president mentioned. You know, he talked about uh, doubling of aggregate uh, government revenues to over 9.1 trillion naira. I just want you to talk about that. Uh, uh, side by side, the fact that um, uh, the demands are still yet unmet, as it were, and um, what way to go? Well, um, I've said it on your program before now that uh, government revenue has come up, but the life of the people has not gone up, especially mm. states and local government. Um, so I agree with him that revenue has gone up because of the removal of subsidy, which is good, which is, which is, uh, I you know I've always been an advocate of removal of subsidy. Government revenue have definitely gone up, but again, the life of the average Nigerian has not gone up. The governments, the governments, especially the governors and the local government administrators um, have not done justice to the type of revenue they, they've been receiving. Remember before now, some of the state government were even complaining that they cannot even pay the minimum wage of 70,000 up to this moment. I, I can't, I, I, I'm here to see some of those state government coming out to say categorically, we are going to pay the 70,000. They are trying to stop it. The labor union 
and that, and we've not seen massive um, infrastructure in terms of development. In so let's take the example of the state that we are staying, Lagos. The most massive um, infrastructural development you are getting from Lagos is the uh, coastal uh, uh, project, which the president mentioned in his broadcast, and that's a federal project. You are not seeing any state uh, project. Yeah. We have not seen government come up with them, uh, uh, with packages for maybe the SMEs in Lagos State. We have not seen government begin to uh, supplement the president in terms of. Uh, um, distribution of um, foods to the less I mean to the less privileged or to the to the most vulnerable Nigeria. We have not seen state government do that. Rather, they are waiting for the truck load that is coming from the federal government. So it shows that um, the governors themselves they are the, they are, they are the one of the major cause of the problem because yeah. their revenue have improved drastically. But the life of their citizens, their indigenous have not improved. And some of these government keep on coming with anti-people policy, trying to even level the people more in terms of businesses. Lagos State is talking about beginning to charge people that do content from the comfort of their home, where they are not providing any infrastructure for them. So it's, it, I think um, what Nigerians are really complaining about when they say end to bad governance yeah. is not just from uh, the presidency alone. Yeah. Um, also goes down to the local government, to the to the state government. But we're more concentrated in the presidency because um, yeah. Nigerian president is the one of the most powerful. That's why governors run to him, cap in hand, is in charge of security. There are still some exclusive leagues that are within his uh, is within his control. And then Nigerians are looking at the cost of doing government, especially yeah. since this president came in. He's a president that's given more uh, uh, ministerial appointment almost 48 ministers does not happen in the history of this country. It's yeah. the same president that is still creating more ministry, ministry of livestock. <laughs> that is laughable. It's also the same president that is have signed the bill into the uh, South, South, South East Development Commission, North East Development Commission, increasing the number, the cost of governance. <laughs> and it's the same uh, president that is also telling, oh, they must look at the unnecessary report and come up with a white paper, yeah. then outside the is saying is creating more uh, ministry, employing is, is having more ministers. So I think those are what Nigerians are are, are angry about. Uh, you see a president telling us to cut our uh, code to 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 be here with them. It's more or less like uh, you you used to use four yards of clothes. They are telling you you just use only your top. Do two yards alone for top alone. And then the same person that is telling you to do two yards for top alone is coming. Coming and you see him wearing Agbada, which is about eight yards. So you 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 won't be able, so that's what what the people are saying. The politicians' yeah. life has remained very high. I mean, bet, it's like their life is better than before because they are getting more revenue. Both the judiciary, mm -hmm. the legislators, and also the 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 the, 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 the governors and others. So they are living large, and the people are suffering. So that's mm -hmm. why people are coming out and saying, you know what. We can't continue to be at this body. All right. Nigerians really need to hold our uh, government um, to account, specifically at the uh, regional level, the state and the local government level, uh, uh, knowing that um, uh, revenue um, has actually uh, increased them um, over the past uh, months. But then again, still talking about the president's um, um, speech and the achievements that he ruled out. Let's talk about transportation specifically. He talked about the launch of the Compressed Natural Gas Initiative and distribution of one million conversion kits to commercial vehicles. He also mentioned that reduction um, transportation costs has actually reduced by approximately 60%. The NURTW uh, are in the news and they said um, that most of the conversion have, uh, or conversions have not been done. So, in your opinion, have we really seen uh, a reduction in uh, transportation costs uh, by 60% as the presidency has claimed? Yeah, I know that that's not true. Mm. And I mean, the president does not read the report from the Bureau of Statistics um, that I keep saying that cost of transportation has gone up even in their last report and even uh, because of the cost of PMS. I remember uh, PMS have even gone up in, La in Lagos to some filling station are selling for 630 and um, 615 naira compared to about 605 naira they were selling before now. So it just shows the fact that the, I think the president is not in touch with the reality on ground. And I mean, he listened to his advisors, which sorry to say, seems to be um, um, being just um, lavishing propaganda all the way because you and I know that that's not true. These CMG buses that the president is talking about, uh, he's promised it ever the very first day he said subsidy gone. He said that we'll still have CMG buses will be coming in. And this is one year after. 
we've not got we've not seen one of those cmg buses anywhere in the country so uh, i mean it's laughable when uh, when you listen to the president's speech it was more or less a, a campaign speech it's telling us uh, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm. This is what I. I mean, look, listen to the 1,000 houses they are in Abuja alone. They say we are planning to do it in very six states. Um, and you ask yourself, even if you provide those houses, how many Nigerians have the, the 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 money to even purchase those houses? Because the any ability of the average Nigerian is now. He's talking about. Um, uh, consumer consumer loan scheme. Oh. I mean, is it not when you have a job that you get consumer the consumer and uh, the loan scheme will be able to give you a, a loan? You don't have a job. You are saying that we should go and consider consumer loan scheme. It's talking about uh, um, a reduction in the import duties that are coming in. But they have forgotten that a lot of people have also invested at the high rate of one 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 uh, one thousand six hundred, and those goods are still there. They, they they've not been sold because the Nigerians are, don't even have the resources to buy those goods. So I think the president is not in tone of reality on ground. His speech was very disappointing, in my own opinion. I, for a long time, I've never sat down to listen to a presidential speech. But for the first time, I woke up and I, I left what I was doing. I said, let me listen to the president's speech. It was all ruling out policy that yeah. he has done that the people are even complaining about. Yeah. I wish the president have come out to say, look, I know I removed subsidy. Yes, uh, I'm a supporter of removal subsidy also. But I've seen the impact of subsidy in in the life of Nigeria, and again, that is why I have ordered that the NNPC should supply crude to Dangote in, uh, in 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 Naira. Hopefully, in the next one month, Dangote will be rolling out petroleum product. We we'll see a reduction in those prices. I hope. The, I, I wish the president was saying like that. Mm. I wish the president is saying the power tariff has gone up, and this is due. To, the power company say this is due to exchange rate. So I've ordered the Minister of Finance to make sure and the CBN governor. That they fix, they get their uh, uh, most of their uh, equipment coming in at a fixed rate, and now zero duties on importation of um, my, uh, machinery that come for power companies mm -hmm. or that will have to do with power. But I expected the president to be making such concession. Mm -hmm. Say this is yes, my policy. It doesn't change his policy. It could be for six months. It could be for 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 for, for three months. Just make sure you say, okay, there are foods are coming in. I've ordered that they will bring a lot of money. Why we try to begin to now nah, the I think the minister for did the minister for agriculture have come out and say the reduction is going to last only for for three months. And within those three months, we might not even see the importation of these goods. So I mean, the importation of these food items into this country at that time because exchange rate is still at 1,600. So what are we talking about? The central bank governor comes out to say that our uh, FSS has grown to about 36 billion, and yet the exchange rate is still at about 1,600 in the official market. You see, when they just roll out this policy, they say it, you look at ground. So, so it's more or less like government magic. You are looking at it, yeah. the more you see, the more you hear, the less you understand. Yeah. So I, I think um, the president should really, really, really um, give some concession to Nigerians at this moment. Nigerians are suffering. A lot of Nigerians are not eating. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's not it's not a cliche. It's not the one that we normally say before. And you say, oh, before now, Nigerians have never protested on hunger. What you see Nigerians protest, if you look at um, the protest, is about no employment, oh. uh, but people are complaining about, oh, we are not employable, we are underemployed, we are... The... But this is the first time in the history of this country, I stand to be corrected, where Nigerians are protesting that they are hungry. They are not asking for government, they are not asking government to give them job. They are not, they say, we don't have food to eat. So that's what the president doesn't understand, or he refused to understand. The people are saying, we don't have food to eat. We are hungry. That's what the people are saying. Yeah. All right, Mukta, uh, it's really, really, really sudden uh, to hear all of this talk and uh, Nigerians lamenting about um, food, you know, and the federal government is announcing that uh, the first batch of 50 kilogram bags of rice priced at 40,000 will be distributed to civil servants, and one is tempted to ask them um, how far would that go, and um, how transparent would all of that be because we've known uh, over time when the, the the presidency or the government talks about um, all of um, these uh, palliatives at the end of the day it doesn't really get them um, to to nigerians because of uh, corruption and all the leakages uh, Mukta, are you still with us there 
Yes, I'm here. All right, Mukta. So it's really, it's really, really, really sad to hear all of that. So lastly, just before we go, still talking about hunger and um, food. This 50 kilogram uh, um, uh, bags of rice um, that will be distributed at 40,000 Naira. Federal government says they want to distribute firstly to civil servants before they will now get to the other um, value chain as it is. What are your thoughts, really? Because sometimes uh, a school of thought believes that um, we are beginning to sound like a broken record. But then what, what are your thoughts, really? Well, my, my thought on this is that um, the same federal government, when the Labour Congress were asking for increment in their wages, mm -hmm. said that the, the civil service are less than 10% of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So it's those 10% of Nigerians that you want to give uh, uh, one bag of rice. You are saying that after so for 10%, what happened to the 90%? You say you've increased minimum wage to uh, to 70,000. A bag of rice is for is going to go for 40,000. Uh, as somebody was saying, and I mean the market women keep saying, I was saying it that uh, 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 is it uh, uh, tomatoes. It's, it's about 15,000. So if I buy a bag of rice at 40,000, I buy tomatoes at uh, 15,000 to cook it just for one day. Uh, so that would be 65,000. Look, Justin, it, it, it hurts me when government seems to say, like, if we are children and you, you, you are telling us to come and buy rice, eat rice now, we eat every day. Look, the commonest food that every Nigerian normally eats, those days I said it in the program, when they say, Justin, in your house, you are eating beans. That means you are the poorest of the poor. Oh. The poorest of the poor. That means you are eating beans. Today, the bag of beans is not even a, 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 a kilo of beans, whatever, whatever a mudu of beans, is not affordable to the ordinary Nigerian. Oh. Beans is more expensive than rice. Look, the government seems to come up with policies, and that's why they are not attractive. They are, their policies are not attractive. They are not even attractive to businesses. They are not even attractive to the ordinary Nigeria. Today, the president's speech was a speech that have addressed the problem. A lot of people would have been on their way to their offices today. Mm. If you look at it, I keep saying it, it's more or less like the protest is still on. It's all about cautions on the side of Nigeria because the president's speech did not address any demand. Partly what the president did for us was like a, 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 in a home, you said, oh, your father has kept some things that, are, that is making people hungry. And your father comes back to him and says, sit down. This policy I have put in place, I, that is what I will implement. Though you'll be hungry, and I think you should continue to be hungry, mm -hmm. because it, um, in, 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 some, in the near future, <laughs> you, you, you thank me for it. Mm -hmm. And you've forgotten that it's you that is alive that has a future. So people are dying because of hunger. People are dying because they cannot buy uh, 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 um, drugs to, 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 to medication. People are dying daily. So, and you, you are there telling us that, oh, you roll out this policy, you roll out this policy, we should be patient. Before now, one of the ministers said, in nine months' time, we'll begin to see the, the, the result of his policy. Now the president is saying we should be patient. There's no time frame for our patient. Our patient can be for the yeah. next four years. Remember, President Buhari yeah. kept telling us to be patient, and he kept borrowing till 96%. And when the president prided himself to have paid the bill of um, reduced uh, um, debt payment, of what was accumulated by President Buhari. I laugh because that's the same party. And some of these ministers that are serving under the president today serve under Buhari. Some yeah. of the special advisors that are serving with the president today serve under Buhari. And most of them at that time was the same thing that they are saying now is the same thing they used to say. You yeah. will see the effect of what Buhari is trying to it's do. At the end of the day, we have seen the effect. And the current president is saying he's dealing with decades of economic decisions and he has forgotten that right. he was part of those decisions right. that led people to Ojota that stopped the removal of subsidy in, in years 15 years ago and today he's the one in there and he's removing subsidy without commiserate uh, palliative right. the 15 years ago when subsidy was to be removed they were palliative that were ruled out by the good dog administration same president was against it today he's there he, he ruled out no right, palliative of, of the removal of subsidy and he's telling us to be patient i think this government needs to wake up and talk to Nigeria, and not just talking to Nigeria. Let's begin to see action on stage. All right, Mokta. Indeed, Nigeria needs to see um, actionable, uh, you know, policies, and not just policies that are just the mere statements and rhetoric, and that will not really affect the common man on the street. Because practically, uh, most Nigerians go to bed without foods, 
in their stomachs, and some of them cannot even sleep because of um, you know, health issues that have um, arisen because of um, the whole hardship. Thank you so much, Mukta Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst, for your time on the show this morning. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>